Hey, what's up guys? Chris Trini here for Chris Core Productions. Today we take a look at how to create the most overdone effect in After Effects. That is cloning. That's right. But we're not just taking a look at how to split a screen in two, which is essentially how this is done. But we're also exploring a few techniques to further sell this effect. Such as syncing up your dialogue with yourself to the point that you can even finish each other's sentences. Or even creating some interaction with yourself, such as this. Hang high five. So let's jump into the technical part and let's take a look at how to easily do this inside of After Effects as well as in Premiere. Alright, so let's jump into After Effects and let's take a look at how to do this effect. To start off, I'm going to show you a neat little trick that allows you to grab clips from Premiere and paste them into an After Effects composition. Now I have the intro of this video already edited in Premiere and what I can do is copy the first clip by hitting Command C or Control C for PC and paste it directly into an After Effects composition. So let's do that. Create a new composition once you're in After Effects and make sure that all the settings match with your clip. Then hit Command V to paste and you will see that we have imported a clip from Premiere into After Effects. The nice thing about Adobe is that you can do something similar in Premiere with dynamic linking. Essentially with dynamic linking you are replacing the clip in your sequence with an After Effects composition rather than making a copy of it. If you'd like to know more about this, I've made a tutorial that you can find in the description. Like I said in the beginning, in most cases this effect is achieved by splitting a scene in two. So we can do that by selecting the pen tool and masking the left part of our top video, which is the clip with me sitting on the left. So now we have two me's, but also two mugs, and we don't really want that. We can adjust the mask in order to hide the second mug. Now make sure to feather the mask out so that that sharp line that splits the screen isn't noticeable. In this case, it's not too bad since the lighting is controlled, but in some cases, the lighting between the two clips won't match. Now this can happen when you're using the sun as the main light source, and since time passes between the two takes, the lighting can be slightly off. When this happens, you can obviously color correct the two shots to get them close enough to match, but a good way to hide the split is to create a mask that sort of follows the geometry in your scene instead of just making a rectangular mask. As far as the passing of the cup part, that is also very simple. You need to fill the part of the person that passes the cup first, and then it's important to not move the cup. Then once your other you grabs it, animate the mask to reveal the cup in the other clip, and then pick up the cup from where it was left. It's a very simple trick, but when you add small details to a scene like this, it can further sell the idea that the two of you are at the same place at the same time. The only downside to this is that if you mess up right after picking up the cup, you not only need to redo that clip, but also the clip of the other you previously filmed that passed the cup to you, because once you pick up the cup, it's no longer in the same place, and it won't match with the other clip if you were to make a second take. <laughs> this, along with memorizing a series of dialogue lines in one single take, can make for some pretty interesting bloopers. <laughs> Finally, let's take a look at how to do the high five part of the effect. When filming it, I try to take a point of reference on where the other hand would be. For example, I was using the object in the center of the table as a point of reference of where my hand should stop, and I tried doing the same thing for the other side, but it didn't really work out perfectly. Even the timing was off. But no worries, because we have After Effects to fix all of our problems. All of them. So to fix the timing problem, we can right click on the clip and enable time remapping. Then we can create a keyframe and move a bit forward in time to where the hands are supposed to meet. Then you can scroll over this time code number until the other hand is next to your right guy's hand. Now the problem here isn't just with timing. The hands don't really meet. There's a bit of a gap between them. This isn't really too noticeable and if you add a sound effect, it can even fix the whole problem. But this is a very good trick to know. So we're gonna start by duplicating the layer and it doesn't really matter what order you decide to do this in, but we'll start with the left hand. And on the duplicate layer, I'm gonna create a mask around the hand. At this point, you can delete the other mask that we had on this layer to split the screen. Then you can align the hand and move it closer to the other one. Then you need to create a mask for the layer beneath it and set it to subtract. And now this will get rid of the other left hand that we're seeing. Feather both masks and then align them so that they match. Then we need to do the same thing with the other hand of the me on the right side. So create a duplicate layer, mask the hand, make a mask for the layer beneath it, and set it to subtract to get rid of the duplicate right side hand. But now we see a black hole, and that is because we need to create a clean plate underneath this clip. 
Now you can just duplicate the bottom layer once again and shift it in time so that the hand disappears from the hole we cut. It's getting pretty tedious, I know, but we're almost done. The last thing you need to do is make these adjustments that we just created only last one frame. I know what you're thinking, all this work for one frame, but I promise you it's worth it. Once you've made all the duplicate layers one frame long, you need to also animate the mask pass of the two clips to only appear for that one frame. So what I do to make them disappear is I create a keyframe in their current position, then I move one frame back and move the masks out of the composition, and then move two frames forward and move them again out of the composition. Now once you do that, you've successfully forced hands together which is sometimes easier to do in After Effects than in real life, but I'm not gonna get political here. Now, like I said in the Demon Eyes tutorial, the main goal of these videos is to learn techniques that can be used for several effects and not just the one showed here. For example, this can be used in fight scenes to connect the punches between your actors and add realism to your scene. So now let's take a look at how to do this in Premiere so that we can explore different ways of doing this. So to create a clone effect in Premiere, it's extremely easy. Once you line up your clips, all you need to do is add an effect to your top clip called Crop. And then all you need to do is either bring in the left side or the right side, depending on uh, whichever part of the screen you're trying to reveal. Then, like we did in After Effects, just feather it out so that you can hide the split, and that's pretty much it. Now to fix the timing of the high five, all we need to do is make cuts instead of keyframes like we did in After Effects with the time remapping. And then I'm going to right click on that clip and go on their speed duration and set it to a number that works for the speed that you need. Now close the gap and now the timing should match. Now since Premiere isn't the best tool to do what we did in After Effects, another way of cheating the hands coming together in a high five is to just cut a few frames from either clips right after they're supposed to meet. Now this adds a sort of sense of impact between the two hands and it tricks your brain into thinking that the two hands just hit each other. Now this is a trick that can again come in handy in a fight or action scene where you need to add more impact to a movement. So now that we know how to do this effect in After Effects and in Premiere, let's take a look at a few tricks that can further enhance this effect. So as you saw in the beginning, we had some uh, interaction with my other self, as well as the dialogue matching up pretty closely. And these elements are very easy to pull off. For the dialogue, what I did is I had a script and I memorized it, and then I had my computer, my laptop, over to the side recording that audio. And then when I had to play the other me, all I had to do was play back the audio that I recorded on my laptop, and I could pretty much react to it. And this way you can really match the timing. But if you don't have another device to record your audio for playback, uh, another thing to do, which is a little bit more challenging, is to memorize the entire script of both characters and as your other self is saying them, also repeat them in your head. This way you know exactly when to jump in and continue with your dialogue. But this means that you not only have to memorize the words, but you have to sort of get into a rhythm so that every time that you repeat the dialogue, it's at the same type of pacing. All right guys, that is it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did like it, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. It definitely helps me a lot. But anyways, if you didn't see last week's tutorial, go ahead and check it out. We created some demon eyes and that was following up a short that I posted not too long ago. And you can find all those videos in the description. And if you haven't seen it yet, I also made a short video slash teaser uh, for this tutorial, which involves a duel between a reflection in the mirror and uh, myself. So go ahead and check that out. Anyways, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Corp Productions. I'll see you next time.